Hello and welcome to the second part of the two-part videos produced by Rugged Maths on the planarity algorithm in the second year of the Decision 1 unit for Further Maths. My name's Simon and in this video we're going to be working through first off what the planarity algorithm is and then looking at an example of that algorithm. This is going to be a longer video so feel free to skip ahead if you just want to see the example. So how does the planarity algorithm work? Well, it's got some several steps and it's a little bit fiddly. So we're going to go through kind of the, the steps one by one and then we'll have a look at an example. So step one, you've got to identify a Hamiltonian cycle. So you should remember from the first year that a Hamiltonian cycle is a cycle, hence the name, that visits every vertex of a network exactly once and then returns to start. Okay, so you've got to identify a Hamiltonian cycle. It can be any Hamiltonian cycle, and this may be a part A to a question where you have to identify one just as part of a question in the exam. The second part is to draw a polygon of that cycle. Okay, you've got to make sure the vertices are labeled. And the really important thing is don't be tempted to just go through the vertices you're labeling them like A, B, C, D, E, F, for instance. Make sure you are labeling them in the order of your Hamiltonian cycle. Okay, typically this will be a hexagon or bigger, but it could be smaller than that. It would just be worth fewer marks. The third step is you then draw edges, so you draw the remaining edges inside the polygon. Okay, and this is really important that, again, you draw the correct label. So we might have a polygon like this, and then we're drawing a bunch of arcs inside the polygon, something like this. Your step four is you then list all vertices, sorry, all arcs inside the polygon. Okay, we don't worry about the Hamiltonian cycles. Don't forget, the point of planarity, as we talked about in the previous video is to take arcs and pull them and decide whether the ones inside our shape will are going to be inside or outside. So we're going to take some and pull them outside and leave some inside. The outer edge of our shape, our Hamiltonian cycle, doesn't actually matter for determining whether a graph is planar or not. It does, but in terms of the mechanics of this last part, once you've got your Hamiltonian cycle, you know that bit is planar. It's just the rest of it that you're trying to figure out. So step five, and this is where it starts to get quite fiddly and technical. You pick any arc with no label. Now, at the start, the first time you do this, everything will be unlabeled. But as we, as you'll see later on, we're going to put labels on arcs. So you choose any arc with no but label that is inside the polygon. So that's in your list in part four and label I. What that means is you're deciding that that arc is going to go inside the polygon. 
at this point, if every arc in your list is labelled, the graph is planar. Step six. So you look at any unlabeled arcs that cross the arc you just labeled. Okay, so you look at any unlabeled arcs that cross the one you just labeled. And one of four things is going to happen. If there are none, you return to step five and repeat that. If any of these edges cross each other, the graph is not planar. Because there's no way to move any of these to the outside and have them not cross each other. If none of them cross each other, then you label those edges with opposite to most recent label type. So if it's if you've just written down an i you'll label them o for outside if you've just labeled them o you'll label them i for inside. At this point you check if all edges are labeled then the graph is planar. If not, repeat step six. And then quite often you'll have to draw the graph as well. So this is the example we're going to go through. By using an appropriate algorithm, show that the graph is planar. So sometimes it will refer to the planarity algorithm, sometimes it won't. If it doesn't, it'll say the word planar so you know which one to use. So step one, we're going to identify our Hamiltonian cycle. Now, this can be any Hamiltonian cycle for this graph, but so yours, the one you pick might be slightly different. You'll still get, you'll still be able to show that the graph is planar, you might just get a different version of the graph than my example here. But you can pick any Hamiltonian cycle you like. I'm going to choose A, B, D, F, E, C, A. We can see A, B, D, F, E, C, A. Now there are potentially more obvious ones you could pick, but that's entirely up to you. The next thing we do is step two and step three. So step two is we draw the polygon of this Hamiltonian cycle. So we can see we've got one arc, two, three, four, five, six arcs on a Hamiltonian cycle, so we're drawing a hexagon. I draw it nice and big. Oops. Now ideally you'd be doing this with a ruler, but this ruler app on the whiteboard is just for measuring. Okay, and then we label it. Now be careful, as I said in the previous point when we were going through the algorithm, be careful to follow the labeling here. Don't be tempted to just go A, B, C, D, E. Okay, because we're going A to B, then B to D, D to F, F to E, 
E to C, and then C to A. Now, because there's often quite a lot of arcs in the network or the graph that you're dealing with, what you might want to do is label or tick off the ones you've got. Okay, so we've done AB, we've done BD, we've done DF, we've done FE, we've done EC, and we've done CA. Don't forget, in an exam, you are perfectly allowed to do this, provided that you have been given the graph, you haven't drawn this as part of a previous part. Okay, if you've drawn this yourself, don't draw on it. The other thing you might want to do is highlight the arcs you are going to be looking at next. This is again up to you. So we're going to be looking at AD, AE, AF, BF, CD, and ED. Okay, that's, as I said, entirely up to you whether you want to do that or not. Now, given that you're going to be listing the arcs that are inside the polygon, if you're identifying them here, you might want to label them and write them down at the same time. because It just makes it potentially a little bit easier. So we've got arcs inside the polygon were AD, AE, AF. So we've got AD, AE, and AF. Then we've got BF, CD, and DE. Doing this, potentially this way, means that you are less likely to forget any of the arcs that you need to draw. So we've now got our list, we've now got our graph, we've identified our Hamiltonian cycle, and we've kind of worked through broadly in the, in the order of Hamiltonian cycle, drawing the polygon, drawing the arcs inside, listing them. But this kind of step of drawing them inside and listing them, you can do at the same time. So now we move on to that step five, where we pick one arc inside our polygon and you label it I. Okay, so I'm gonna to choose to label AD with an I. Now what I tend to do is write out the list every time. Okay, and I'm gonna call it stage one. As we see more exams for this new specification, the necessity to write out the list every single time might change. So if your teacher tells you, oh, you don't need to write it out every time, you can just take your list and label your list as you go, listen to what they're saying, because this video may become outdated with this explanation as we see more exams. The process is still the same, it just means you might have to write out less. I'm just going to keep that there because we need that to have a look at. So we now, uh, we've done step five. We now look at step six. We look and see, are there any unlabeled edges crossing the one we just labeled? And we can see, yes, BF is crossing it. So AD is going to be, when we draw our final graph, AD is going to be inside the polygon. We don't know anything about AE or AF, but we do know that BF, so we're going to label that with the opposite label that we used here. So AD is inside, BF is going to be outside. Are all the arcs labeled? No. So we repeat, we've just labeled BF. So we look and see, are there any unlabeled arcs that cross BF? So we've got three arcs that cross BF. AD is already labeled, so we don't need to worry about that. 
we can see that CD and EF, sorry, ED, CD and ED cross BF. When you're dealing with two arcs, you've got to check, do they cross each other? We can see they only meet at D, so that's fine. If they crossed each other, the graph is not planar. And you would have to write that if the question was asking you to show it. So we've got AD is inside. So remember, we've got CD and ED. EF is outside. And we label them with the opposite label that we just used here. So CD is going to go inside. DF is going to go inside. They're not all labelled, so we repeat. Now we've got two arcs we've just labelled, so this is where you've got to be really careful. Because we look at all of the arcs that cross either of these. So we can see we've only got two remaining, so it's a little bit easier. We've got AE and AF, and we can see they don't cross each other, which is good. AE crosses CD. AF crosses um, CD, so that's fine. Why have I got DF? Oh, that should be DE. There we go. Sorry, that's my fault. That should be DE. So we've got AE and AF. We can see they only meet at A, so they don't cross each other anywhere else, so that's fine. So we label them using the opposite label that we used for these. And so they these are both going to go outside. Oops. We now look and see all arcs are labeled. which means the graph is planar. The last thing we really should do, and sometimes the, the question will tell you to do this, sometimes it won't, is draw out the graph. So we've got our, so again, we start with our Hamiltonian cycle. A, B, D, F, E, C, and then every arc in our list that has an I next to it, we draw inside. So we've got AD, CD, and DE. That's very poorly drawn, but it'll do. So we can see that none of these cross each other. Any with an O, we draw outside. So AE, AF. Draw that one nice and big, and then BF. And we can see none of these cross each other either. So this is a really useful way to check whether the graph is planar or not, because if you can draw it like this, nothing crosses except at vertices, the graph is planar. That's quite a long video, uh, and it is quite a long algorithm, and that's very consistent with the second year content for the decision unit is the graph that is the algorithms you do are quite long and there's lots of writing down so the videos for the second year are going to be a bit longer you've just got to persevere with that unfortunately okay so we can see whoops we can see here we've got our algorithm question and we've got everything to do with planarity there Thank you for watching.